in the first book, On the Train to Hogwarts, Ron is trying to show Harry a spell to turn his rat yellow. And he does the spell, you know? And he says, George and Fred taught him the spell, and Hermione's standing there with her, You're going to do magic, but well, let's see then, how special are you? And then, so he does his spell, Sunshine Daisy's butter mellow turn this stupid fat rat yellow, and nothing happens. And Hermione says, It's not a very good spell, is it? It wasn't a rat. That's why the spell didn't work. It didn't work because Scabbers was just Wormtail. He was a man in a rat's body. The spell didn't work because, because he wasn't a rat. You can't turn this stupid fat rat yellow if the rat is not a rat. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about some Harry Potter plot holes. These are mainly from book three, The Prisoner of Azkaban, so follow along with me here, will you? Okay, so my main question about book three is why they use the time turner to go back in time to save Sirius and Buckbeak and to set Sirius loose on the world as a convic convicted felon. Basically make him be on the run for his life when they had a tool like the Pensieve available to them. I know the kids didn't know about it, but Dumbledore did, and seeing as how Dumbledore was the one who suggested that they use the Time Turner, could he not have also suggested that they use the Pensieve? And would that not have made more sense? Because if they could have used the Pensieve to visit the kids' memories, and even Professor Lupin's memories of, or even Sirius's memories himself, of what actually happened to the Potters, what happened at the alley where the muggles were killed, what happened in the Shrieking Shack, and everything so, so that they could see the story progress as we did that made us realize that Sirius was innocent and that Wormtail was alive. Why wouldn't they have done that to show to the Ministry that Sirius was not an evil villain and that he actually was free? And they could have actually set him free to do as he pleased versus having him be on the run. I mean, yes, he's still alive, but that's my biggest question about this book. Like, surely there was a better way to go about it than just releasing him and making him continue to be a felon on the run. My next question comes about um, the scene with Aunt Marge where he blows her up. How exactly does the Ministry of, or the Department of Underage Wizardry detect who is using magic? Because I know it's not based off of, like, whose wand is doing magic, because they claimed that it was Harry using magic when it was actually Dobby in the previous book. So it's just magic out of a household. So if there's more than one witch or wizard in a household, how do they know that one is under age is the one who is using the magic versus the one who is of age? Because, like, how do you, how can you tell? Like, you can't tell the difference between a 12-year-old boy and a house elf. How are you supposed to tell the difference between a 17-year-old, okay, a 15-year-old wizard and an 18-year-old wizard? Like, how do you know? I, I don't understand the concept. The first book where Harry used magic to release the snake from its encasement, yet he didn't know that he was a wizard yet. Like, do they track that? How do you explain that? How are they tracking magic, but yet don't know who it belongs to? Speaking of, we've seen in book two how just terrible wizard's art magic with a faulty wand via Ron. And it basically gave us this viewpoint that without a wand, a wizard is useless. And yet, without a wand, Harry was able to release a snake, blow up his aunt, whatever else it is that Harry does. How can little kids accidentally do wandless magic? Like, they have no idea what kind of powers they have. They don't know what they're doing, but yet they can do wandless magic. Something that Ron couldn't do with a broken wand, let alone no wand at all. This is my last thing with book three. As a 13-year-old wizard... Harry is given complete free reign of Diagon Alley. 
and is just basically told to come back every night and have dinner and go to bed. But he's allowed to do whatever he wants during the day. But at Hogwarts, in a protected castle, he's not allowed out after hours, and he's not allowed to go to Hogsmeade surrounded by his professors like Dumbledore and McGonagall, who are definitely going to keep an eye on him. But in Diagon Alley, which is connected to Nocturne Alley, which is where the Dark Wizards go, it's perfectly fine for him to walk around and do whatever he wants all day long. Someone's going to explain to me how that makes sense, right? Those are my questions about some of the logistical issues that I have with, mainly with Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, but some that kind of thread throughout the series as well. Um, if you have any thoughts on these, please leave them down below. If you have any videos on plot holes in Harry Potter, please link me so I can watch them because I love discussing Harry Potter with anyone and everyone who will listen. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Tuesdays and Fridays, so hopefully I will see you next time. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!